the impact of valve calcification in aortic stenosis. That's the topic. I am with the professor of medicine from Mayo, Dr. Maurice Enrique Serrano. And this is a paper coming up in Jack, and I, I wanted to chat with you for a variety of reasons, but can you first off give me an, a, an idea of what your, your paper is about and what you were, were looking to discuss? Let me give you a little background. Um, aortic stenosis used to be a simple disease. Um, was occurring around 50, people were dying at 60, uh, symptoms were uh, everything, and uh, it was a disease easy to follow. But now, aortic stenosis has become degenerative, and it has become much more challenging. We're seeing it in older people. We're seeing it at an age of 75, with a lot of comorbidities, people are moving less, symptoms have become less interpretable, and more recently we have learned that the hemodynamics is more difficult because we're seeing people who have aortic stenosis with low gradient in particular, and the issue is to say, how do we make an interpretation of that? So we need objective markers of outcome which are gonna help us manage these patients, this challenging new population that we have to deal with, in particular because we now we have TAVI and, and it helps in these frail elderly patients to treat the disease. So how are we going to make a diagnosis that is certain of whether these people need or do not need surgery? So in addition to the hemodynamics, we do not say that we should move the Doppler out of the picture. We need other markers of outcome. And among those, we have to remember that aortic stenosis is a calcified disease. The calcification is the cause of the disease, is what makes the valve stenotic. So the idea behind this measurement of calcification is that we're measuring the source of the disease and the severity of the valve lesion. So in all these cases that are difficult to make an interpretation, we have that measure of the source of the disease. CT, because it's x-ray, is paramount to measuring calcium. So we've used that, and in a previous paper published in JAK, we've shown that it can help in people who present with low grading, who are not concordant severe or concordant moderate. So that the aim of the paper that is to be published in JAK is to say, is the measurement of calcification not just a diagnostic tool, but also a survival assessment tool? And so what we wanted to see is whether the measurement of calcification adds to all we have with the hemodynamic in predicting the survival of patient and in evidently managing this patient based on, on measures that affect outcome. So uh, that's the basis of the paper. So in terms of how well you get a chance to determine who you should really operate on, who, who should undergo TAVI, what group of people, what percentage of patients are you really confused about in terms of, is this a good approach? Well, the, the, um, currently there is a lot of hesitation on how many people are doubtful. The guidelines have evolved in, in a more restrictive way in saying high velocity, high gradient, that's the main markers. Uh, I, we, we think that we do not know the truth yet. In our population study of aortic stenosis, among the people who had a low valve area, two-thirds presented with low gradient. And so the magnitude of the problems remains to be defined, not just in people who have low flow, but even in people who have other reason to have low gradient, such as poor compliance of the aorta, uh, affecting the, 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 how the pressure gradient develops so that uh, we believe it is a, a significant number, but we don't have yet in very large population the percentage of patients who really need an additional measure. So right now, what guides your thought process? Our thought process is that we have those complicated patients. They do not move. Their symptoms are uninterpretable. Often the measurement the hemodynamic measurements will be on the cusp for valve area with a relatively low gradient. We need to have something else. 
And the CT is a very simple exam. No dye, measurement of the calcification. It's, uh, there are computer programs to do it. The radiation is very low. It's a very simple test, no danger for the renal function. So it can be done at low cost and very efficaciously. But the issue is, does that influence outcome? So when we did this work, you encounter immediately some difficulty because there are men women. Women have a smaller aortic valve, Correct. so they are supposed to have less calcification. So what we've learned is to say, how should it be expressed? And the best expression for calcification is the total calcification divided by the area of the left ventricular outflow tract, and that measurement that we call aortic valve calcification density is a measurement that sort of normalizes for the size of the aortic annulus. But there is another factor that comes into play is that men and women do not respond similarly to the calcification. Women get to severe aortic stenosis at a much lower calcification density. Men at the higher calcification density. So if we say uh, a smaller amount of calcification is 100 units per centimeter square of aortic valve, women around 270, 290 will have severe calcification. Men, it's very close to 500. Wow. And so there is a difference. So we, to, to try to understand what's the implication of that, we gathered three centers, Mayo Clinic Rochester, a center, Hôpital Bichat in Paris, and the University of Laval in Quebec, and we grouped our cases and we got a series of approximately 800 patients, close to 800 patients, where we had all the hemodynamics, all the symptoms, all the baseline descriptors, and we could see if calcification was predicting anything beyond. And the simple answer is that yes, calcification adds to everything in predicting survival after diagnosis. So it's not just a marker of the severity, and it's the same thing as the hemodynamics. It's something more. So it adds to the diagnosis of severity of the aortic valve disease. It predicts survival. So that's the first part. Second part is the marker is an objective marker with, with something specific. So the threshold to say severe is not the same in men and women. For the audience, we should remember 300 units per centimeter square in women, 500 in men. And then above that, there is no further excess mortality. There is a threshold and plateau of risk. You're above, you're at risk. You're below, you're at low risk. So it's a very simple interpretation, a yes, no, and you can say severe calcification. And we're able this way to analyze severe calcification in classifying severe calcification in men and women and look at the implication for survival. So if you look at severe calcification, adjusting for everything, it increases the risk by almost three times in terms of mortality. So it's a very important marker. It's additional to everything. And the net reclassification index is 12.5%, which is quite, quite yeah. significant. So it is a very, it appears to be a very important marker of outcome in patients with aortic stenosis. And when there is high calcification, the survival is markedly improved by aortic valve replacement. So we have a circle of markers in saying these calcifications, not just for the valve severity, but also a marker of survival. And when we suppress the calcification, we eliminate the excess risk related to the calcification. So you're thinking that eventually this may be used in a wider variety of patients, just and, so you know I where do, you're at? I do think so. I do think so because if I see a patient, even people who have 40, 45 millimeters of mercury of gradient, I'm gonna see of mean gradient. I'm gonna see them, and if they have a high calcification rate, very high rate of calcification, I will talk to the patient, even if they're asymptomatic, and tell them, look, you have a high calcification, you're gonna have a high progression, either you decide to be operated now, 
or I have to follow you very closely right. because I am concerned about your outcome. And so it's useful in people who do not have an immediate obvious indication. Somebody who is a young patient, um, high gradient, low valve area, symptomatic, no, I don't need anything else. Right. But in almost everybody else, I will need that additional marker of survival to help them decide what they want to do. And to find more details about this particular study, please take a look at uh, Jack and uh, the work by Dr. Maurice Enrique Serrano and colleagues from the Mayo Clinic and uh, around the world here in Barcelona at the ESC meeting. I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor, CardioSource World News.